In this video, we are going to show you how to configure ephemeral authentication. Privileged user access deployment consists of three components. Ephemeral authentication server, where Big IP APM acts as the auth server for legacy systems by generating and managing temporary passwords. WebSSH, which provides interface between client and legacy systems. And the authentication server that provides interface for legacy systems and enforces authentication using ephemeral authentication infrastructure. Privileged user access is configured using ephemeral authentication. The ephemeral authentication process is as follows. The user logs into APM using smart card or other credentials. The APM policy checks the provided credentials against AD, OCSP, or CRLDP, and retrieves the AD LDAP information, returning a webtop with backend resources. When the user clicks on resource, APM generates an ephemeral password saved in the username and password hash intro session DB. APM passes the resource to WebSSH. SSH makes a request to the backend or router using a dedicated VIP. The backend or router makes a request to Big IP Radius or LDAP VIP or both. If using both, the configuration requires two different VIPs, a Radius VIP and an LDAP VIP. The LDAP server will verify the ephemeral password returning a successful or failure response. The SSH session will be established or denied based on the outcome of the return's response. The first step is to create an authentication configuration. An auth config is an ephemeral configuration created to specify the accepted protocols and ephemeral password usage for privileged user access. Next, set up the WebSSH security configuration. Type a name for your configuration and select the basic ciphers, key exchange methods, HMAX, and compression algorithms. When that is completed, go ahead and click Save. Next, we'll create an access configuration. So go to Ephemeral Access Configuration, type the name, select the Authentication Configuration and the SSH Security Configuration that we just created. Configure the WebSSH resource, type a name for your resource, and confirm the destination host IP. Confirm your port and select your authentication configuration. Type the caption for the WebTop resource and we'll go ahead to the next step. We will now create an LDAP authentication configuration. Type a name, create the user DN and password, and add it to the user bypass list. Next, we create an LDAP authentication. So go to Authentication LDAP, make sure the server connection is selected as Use Pool. Type the new server pool name and add the destination IP. Add your base search DN and admin DN. Verify your admin password and select finished. Now create and name a new web top. Select the type and click finished. Now create a new access profile. Name the profile and select the profile type as all. Scroll to the bottom and add the language settings. Next we'll edit the access policy. Clicking edit under access per session policy will open a new tab in your browser window. To add a new element, click the plus sign at the point on the policy where you want to add the features. The element I'm adding will be a message box warning users that they are about to approach a restricted access site. Next step is to add the login page. Select Add Item and Save. For this particular LDAP policy, we will add an LDAP query here. At the server pool we created earlier, add your search DN and filter, and then enable the show extended error feature. Next, we will select and set up the branch rules 
after removing the default option. Click Add Branch Rule and select Change. Now we are going to add Expression. The LDAP query has passed. The next step is to make sure that this tree ends in an allow pathway. And then we add a variable assign in between the LDAP query and allow. Select variable assign and add new entry. Select change and add your custom variable. On this side, we will switch custom to AAA attribute. Selecting the LDAP agent, we will add our attribute name. Next, we will add a second variable. Add your values, and on the right hand side, select session variable and specify the session variable that contains the username. On the deny branch, I'm going to add a message box with the denial message. The next part of the policy requires a macro, so select Add New Macro. Next, click the plus sign next to the macro I named Admin Access. And add SSO credential mapping. The next element I'm adding will be Advanced Resource Assign. Within Resource Assign, select Add New Entry, Add Details. Select Show More Tabs, and assign the WebTop element created previously. Next, we will add additional details. Go to WebSSH and add our WebSSH feature as well. Follow the variable assign with the addition of the macro we just created. Now that our policy is complete, go to the top of the page and click Apply Access Policy. Now navigate back to Big IP and create a new connectivity profile. Name your profile and select Common Connectivity. Navigate up to Local Traffic Virtual Servers and create a new virtual server for LDAP. Make sure to select the source address, destination address, and service port. And then select your protocol profile. Scroll down to service profile and select auto map. Next apply your ephemeral authentication access configuration and your LDAP authentication configuration. Now select and apply your LDAP server pool. Click finished. Navigate back to virtual servers and create one for the ephemeral auth server. Select your source address, destination address, and service port. Select your HTTP profile. Select your SSL profile. And for source address translation, select auto map. Now apply your rewrite and access policy profiles. Scroll down to Ephemeral Authentication, apply your access configurations, and click Finished. This is an example of a basic ephemeral authentication configuration using LDAP and WebSSH. Users may need to add other necessary items for their installation. Now test the applied configuration. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you need further assistance, please visit support.f5.com.